We're working on this uh, Suzuki file again, the M16A. In the last video, we found the mass airflow sensor linearization map, the IAT, and the DTC handler. In this video, we're going to be looking for the uh, linearization parameters or values for the manifold absolute pressure sensor in case somebody wants to do like a three bar map on a turbo build or something like that. Uh, they'll be able to swatch out, swap out their map sensor and get what they need and have the calibration correct. So we have our DTCs over in Notepad++ and uh, we have our DTC handler. So if you'll take a minute and whatever file you're working on, you're always looking for patterns. So I did notice that after the DTC handler over here in the assembly code, the decimal or the hex value that's loaded into the DTC handler is loaded into memory space R4 or register R4 after each DTC handler. So we are gonna search this instruction right here. So control shift E, paste. What are we looking at? We're looking at uh, 0107, 0108. Put an A instead of 4B. So that'll be a decimal value of 10, which gets us our DTC that we're looking for. We'll go ahead and put a, yeah, that's still doing good. All right, so we're just looking over here for a place where it loads this address right after it calls the DTC function. So we went too far. Actually, let's just do a search all, okay. There we go, DTC handler. And that's lit up because I highlighted it in the last page we were at. So just like before, we have it 10 and one loaded to what I believe is DTC reset. And then we have 10 and 16 to set the DTC 11 and 16, 10 and 11. So we're gonna call this uh, DTC P0107, 0108, map, circuit, high, comma, low. All right, and then this is the value that sets it. Again, we covered this in the last video. And this is what writes to this value. Okay, so here's our circuit high, circuit low. We'll go ahead and grab those really quick. So that's comparing R3 to R14. R3, this data is loaded into R3, and then 9FC is the low. So let's throw these into Winnells really quick. Um, these are decimal values, 16 bit, high, low. We'll create a map there, 0. 0.000076. We did cover this in the last video, but I'll show you guys where I'm getting that number from. All right, and this is gonna be two spaces, max, min, volt, okay? And uh, yeah, that looks correct, 9FC, that was correct, okay? So is where I'm getting that voltage from is this value right here. So in the last video, we talked about how the voltage is coming into UVAR1, okay? So this is, we'll do map V raw, Okay, and then it's compared to these decimal values. And then based on those conditions, it writes to 525E. But you'll notice after this code, regardless of what happens with whether it's above or below these values, 525E still gets the same RAM address being written to it. So I don't know the purpose of that code. It looks like it's not really useful, but I could be wrong. So that's why we didn't look up these addresses in Winnells. We just put these ones in because UR1, that's where it's actually making determinations. If volts is less than this, this statement is true and it moves on to this. And if it's less than the minimum voltage, this statement is true. So circuit low equals two, circuit high equals one, else equals zero. Okay, and that's just based on this code right here. You can take a minute, pause, check it out, see what I'm seeing. All right, and then back to this. So we're gonna see where data FR4 float. Okay, so that's that decimal value. So it is multiplying in this function, param three times param one. And that's how I know to multiply 
these values in Winnells by this decimal value, okay? All right, so as far as the sensor linearization goes, so this is our voltage, right? This line of code writes to FR1. FR1 is multiplied by this. So we have a float multiply add. So FR2 should be 25.33, and it is. And then FR3 right before is this is zero. Okay, perfect. So this is our factor and our offset. So we'll go ahead and search this address. It's going to be in 32-bit float. Okay, so we're going to call this factor. And then we're going to give a little snippet here. So volts times factor plus All right. So then this is our offset. Okay, and we're going to paste the same formula here. Okay. Max, min, factor and offset. So now that we have the uh, factor and offset, if you get the data from a map sensor that you're planning on using, you would edit these values according to what you need. The OEM sensor that's in it right now is only going to go up to like 113 kPa. That's uh, 25.33 times 4.51 plus zero. So here's my Isuzu file. These are its map sensor linearization. So if we chose to switch out this map sensor, we would just copy this value over for the factor, this value for the offset. We raise our you know max kPa up to 330 kPa, so there's your three bar map or whatever, um, versus the OEM is like 113 kPa is where it maxes out at 4.5 volts. That's just an example of what you can do once you have these values. All right, so let's jump back into Ghidra and make sure we label everything now. This is our map calibration function and we already have our raw voltage all dialed in. This is our map in KPA. I guess that's kind of an assumption. I'm, I'm fairly certain I'm right though on that. It seems, seems like these numbers would get us KPA. All right, so that's it for this video. There will be more to come. Uh, when I have time, I'll mess around with this file and please like, subscribe, and share this video. Thank you.